Why are you so obsessed with me? That's a good question, because as mean as Regina is, we have to admit we're obsessed. We love rooting for the hero, but let's take a moment to appreciate some classic female villains. Is Miranda Priestly really the devil? And does Cher get a pass for her clueless behavior? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Because we're going to start out with the meanest fictional gal around, Miranda Priestly. Just how bad is she? Well, she's in a movie called The Devil Wears Prada, and let's just say she has some expensive tastes. You have no style or sense of fashion. Although author Lauren Weisberger claims Miranda is not based on notoriously particular Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour, you don't have to search hard to find similarities between them. When this movie came out, a lot of fans couldn't help but compare her to Nuclear Wintour, a nickname she hates, by the way. Miranda is cold, calculating, and possibly the worst boss anyone could have the misfortune of working for. Tales of your incompetence do not interest me. Sure, she's a smart, shrewd woman who knows her stuff, but her vast amount of fashion knowledge doesn't exactly help improve morale around the office. You're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room. Although Andy loses herself trying to impress Miranda, the product-clad devil doesn't change at all and remains one of the sassiest characters of all time. Now let's talk about the meanest girl from the appropriately titled movie, Mean Girls. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? There's no doubt Regina is popular. People think she's awesome when she punches them in the face. But she's also undoubtedly the worst. Beware of the plastic. Not only does Regina rule the school with an iron fist, but nobody is safe from her manipulations. She isn't even loyal to her own friends, who are desperate for the smallest bit of kindness from Regina. The meaner Regina was to her, the more Gretchen tried to win Regina back. Not only does Regina verbally spar below the belt, but to make matters worse, she's totally two-faced. She'll smile at the folks at school and then let them have it in her burn look, or under her breath as they walk away. That is the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. Not only is Regina downright cruel, but she has serious issues managing her anger. Even being hit by a bus could barely break her stride. Hopefully playing lacrosse helps her work through some of her clearly serious issues. No, I'm a little crazy. Nancy Downs from The Craft isn't the most popular girl in school by a long shot, but not being part of the plastics doesn't necessarily make you a nice person. Not only does Nancy have some serious issues, but she has the power to back up her anger at the world and anyone she thinks does her wrong. You're a witch! Even before she got a serious power boost via an ancient ritual, she was the definition of sassy, and she didn't hesitate to use her magic for evil, given the slightest motivation. She hung out with people willing to let her be the boss and couldn't stand the idea of things not going her way. No, he's gotta pay. That is terrible and downright spooky as Nancy can be, you can feel at least a little bad for her, considering she didn't have the easiest life. I mean, we can almost see through this thing. Leave me alone! Jesus! God. Still, she let a little bit of power, okay, a lot of power, go to her head. Nobody was safe from Nancy's ego, her need for control, or her desire for revenge. Not even the people she once called her friends. Imagine how different Mean Girls would have been if Regina could have cast spells. In The Princess Diaries, we watched Mia Thermopolis go from awkward high school student to a slightly less awkward princess. But while Mia underwent some major changes, the same can't be said for her classmate, Lana Thomas. She knows just how shy and unhappy Mia is, and uses her popularity and confidence to make her as miserable as possible. Lana seems to have it all. Money, looks, talent, and friends, whose names rhyme with hers. But the one thing she doesn't have is kindness, or any kind of redemption arc. <laughs> Lana is unrepentantly awful to Mia, but in the books they actually go on to become friends. But since we're strictly talking about the movies here, she's still one of the meanest fictional girls around. Actress Mandy Moore said she'd be open to reprising the role as long as Lana could be somehow redeemed. She'd love to add some backstory about how Lana was insecure herself and see her come to regret the way she treated Mia. Josh is such an idiot. We're gonna make sure no one bothers you. Olive Pendergast learned how quickly a couple of white lies can spiral out of control in the movie Easy A. She lied about hooking up, causing a rift between her and her bestie, and inspiring her classmate Marianne Bryant to go on a warpath. I'm not the one that you have to answer to for your depraved behavior. Not only is Marianne an absolute bully, but she tries to pretend her actions are motivated by caring and compassion, when that couldn't be further from the truth. I love you guys. 
God loves you guys. Now let's change lives today. She uses her beliefs as an excuse for bad behavior and is totally judgmental towards Olive about something that wouldn't be any of her business even if it was true. Marianne wasn't even honest about her own spiteful, mean nature and made it her mission to make Olive as miserable as possible. Maybe next time a certain somebody will be a little more careful what she says in the water closet. The only slightly mitigating factor here is that Marianne was secretly just as miserable as she tried to make Olive. How long uh, do these embraces usually last? She held herself to a set of impossibly high standards and felt an enormous amount of pressure to be perfect at all times. That's enough to make anyone lose their cool. We're not giving Marianne a pass for her bad behavior, but it's possible she's not as outright evil as some of the other mean girls we've found. I really want us to be friends. Can we please be friends? Legally Blonde is an absolute classic, but not everything in the film has aged well. Like Elle declaring Enrique isn't straight because of the way he dresses. Seriously, Elle, not cool. However, a lot of the movie is sadly still relevant today, including issues faced by both Elle and Vivian Kensington. While Elle might look like a member of the Plastics, she's pretty much the nicest person you could ever hope to meet. You know, if you had come to a rush party, I would have at least been nice to you. Meanwhile, wealthy Vivian makes it her mission to make Elle as miserable as possible. She might not wear pink, but she manages to torment and embarrass her rival. Do you think it's acceptable that Ms. Woods is not prepared? No. But even though Elle is an angel most of the time, let's not forget she was trying to steal Vivian's fiance. Do you remember when we spent those four amazing hours in the hot tub after winter formal? Not only that, but Vivian was under an intense amount of pressure and was forced to work twice as hard to get half as much respect as her male co-workers, while Elle made navigating Harvard look effortless. Vivian was also willing to admit she was wrong about Elle and was smart enough to dump that jerk Warner. If there's one word we'd use to describe Big Red from Bring It On, it would be ruthless. Although she might have some other adjectives she prefers. I'm sexy, I'm cute, I'm popular to boot. Being head cheerleader isn't easy, especially when you're determined to be the absolute best. Big Red's merciless coaching style may have won her competitions, but it didn't win her many friends. In fact, even to her fellow cheerleaders, she's an indomitable force, and her squad has no love lost for her no matter how many times she dragged them to victory. Big Red has no feelings. Honestly, the only redeemable thing about Big Red is that she was upfront about how awful she is instead of trying to hide it like characters such as Regina George. Not only was Big Red a bully to her own teammates, but she was even worse to rival cheerleading squad the Clovers. She stole the routines and was unremorseful when her crimes were brought to life. If I made any mistake as a squad leader, it wasn't borrowing cheers. We know all's fair in love and cheerleading, but Big Red definitely took things way too far. Brittany, this is not a democracy, it's a cheerocracy. Okay, so technically, this gaggle of girls from Never Been Kissed isn't a solo mean girl, but Gibby, Kristen, and Kirsten do tend to operate as a single unit. And collectively, they were really unkind to anyone they thought was less popular and fashionable than they were, which was a surprisingly high number of people, including Josie Geller. Kirsten, Kristen, Gibby! What's up, girlfriends? For most of the movie, these girls were just kind of petty, and as much as we hate to admit it, sometimes they weren't exactly wrong with their fashion assessments. I know, like five chickens had to die just so she could look that stupid. But at prom, these gals really went over the top when they schemed to cover Aldi's with a can of dog food. Seriously, it's like a way less intense version of Stephen King's Carrie. Luckily, Josie managed to step up and give these girls a stern lecture about their actions. You will spend your lives trying to figure out how to keep others down because it makes you feel more important. It seems like they turned around after being dressed down by Josie, and we're willing to chalk up their mean girl way to them being young, impressionable, and struggling to think for themselves. It can be hard not to hate on spoiled Amber Von Tussle in either version of the Hairspray movie. She's just plain awful to Tracy and is too stuck up to see past her own nose, at least most of the time. But you have to admit, she had the deck stacked against her as far as parents go. Her mom is overbearing, cold, and intolerant of other people. Overcoming that kind of upbringing is hard, and it's impressive that Amber was able to recognize her mother's faults and strive to become a better person. Amber may have been a bully at one point, but she made it her mission to be more than that. I lost. Mom, let's just deal with it. In this case, the movie title Clueless pretty much says it all about the main character, Cher. She grew up completely indulged by her rich father and bonded with her bestie Dion over the fact that everyone is jealous of them. Don't get us wrong, Cher starts off being super judgmental of everyone else around her and thinks she's better than her peers. Ew! Get off of me! Ugh, as if! 
But really, she's just completely out of touch with reality and doesn't realize there's more than one way to be fabulous. Cher just needed a little push in the right direction to realize helping others is more rewarding than hurting them, and she has more to offer than just her looks. To tell you the truth, I have not seen such good doing since your mother. Who is your favorite fictional mean girl? And do you think she falls on the classy to sassy spectrum? Share your pick with us and your fellow fans in the comment section below, and then click subscribe for more videos from us here at The Things. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.